just qualify as the most ironic sales pitch in South Africa right now. The West Coast might be synonymous with fishing, but quaint holiday homes and expensive developments are the only things in abundance here today. The government says fish stocks are collapsing. Stringent new controls are needed to save what's left. In the traditional fishing communities, the strict new measures have brought a harvest of resentment. Pardon Norster is probably South Africa's most famous fishing village, except that very little fishing goes on here these days. Pardon Norster came into being to provide labor for the big cray fishing companies in the 50s. Today, cray fishing is still the big money spinner, but for the ordinary fisher folk, net and handline fishing are the way they make money and put food on the table. Except now, hardly any are allowed to fish. Minister Vali Musa is the King Solomon in this tale. He's the man who decides who gets and who doesn't. But no amount of wisdom will make everyone happy. The point is to have fewer people catching less fish. What we try to do with the regulations is to ensure that we, we harvest the maximum possible fish from the ocean, but more, not more than that which would allow the fish to restore the stocks. We don't want to do it in a manner which, where we overfish and in a few years' time there will be no fish whatsoever. Three years ago, the scientists at Marine Coastal Management alerted the minister to a crisis. They said South Africa's inshore fish were on the brink of commercial collapse. The minister declared an emergency. That announcement has now reached its logical conclusion. It's playing itself out in this secured room in the Cape Town offices of Marine Coastal Management. Here, stringent new fishing rights are being allocated. On the walls are reminders of the storm around them. So some species are managed by quotas, others are managed by simply allowing a limited number of fishermen onto it. And when you add all that together, you have a, a fairly well uh, managed fishery system. And we do that because we have seen how in other parts of the world, especially in Europe, and in the Americas, there has been overfishing and, and a virtual depletion of the fish stocks in some of those areas, and we don't want to be in that situation in South Africa. There is always um, a complaint that they don't have enough fish and don't make enough money. Um, there's always a cry for more fish in order to create more jobs. But I think uh, we have a responsibility and so uh, we need to consider the environmental uh, uh, impact uh, of this industry. The minister could just leave it, in which case uh, we would be looking at complete commercial extinction and in the worst case total biological extinction, 
or he could say hang on enough is enough let's reduce the fishing effort now and let's try to recover these fish populations and that that's the intelligent option that he's taken <laughs> in Paternoster, the fishermen are reluctant to buy the scientific arguments. In fact, they refuse to buy the argument. They gather on the hill overlooking the sea and the unused boats and debate their fate. Dus is het vis komt net zeker dat hij dat hier bij ons komt. Ze zijn al nou in die winter. De hele winter vis nu voorbij geloop. Hier heb je geloop, nou krijg je in die zomer, krijg je nou weer een zwakker tijding is. Maar niet zeggen dat die, zee, die vis gaat minder in. Kan ik niet hier. Nu hier gaat ons bedrijf uit die niet, zoals bij ons dat vis vang je. En aardig trek niet, dat kan ik niet aan me zien. Dat zou die regering zijn. Zoals op papier gezet. Zo dat ze die vissen daar in de zee, waar hem gevangen wordt. Nou komt nou Wieland, hij praat van de bron uit roei. Vis zit er steeds aan, hij is een ziekte dat met de heers en de ziekte raak hij weg. Daar gaat bloeien. Hoe kan ze hem uit roei? Hij kan staan te voren en hij trekt zijn ton in die, 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 die spalit. Daar is bij je vis. Die aarde is niet zo voor vijf maas kan het je vangen. Die aarde bron is die niet uit je uit. Hij is verbieterd eindig. Vis is nog genoeg. Zijn daar ook niet recht niet weg. These St. Helena Bay fishermen are the lucky few in their community who did receive net fishing rights. But they have another whole set of concerns. Firstly, they say they don't have the money they need to fetch the permits in Cape Town. We have all the years in the permit. We have 10 years in the year, 10 years in the year, 10 years in the year. But I have to pay for my own permit, for my own permit, for my own permit, for my own permit. Het is ook onsuccesvol. Toen moet ik weer een appel aan tikken. Toen kreeg ik dat nou. Maar nu moet ik weer een dron aan betalen. Om het weer af te halen. En ik heb niet dat geld. Dat betekent dat ons, zoals het nou reeds hier honger leeg. Voor het nog altijd zal honger leeg. Als de andere een gemaakt zal honger leeg. En die mensen, daar wordt ons blij. Die, 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 die mensen, daar wordt ons blij. Alle kijk voor ons. En dan komen die mannen met die vis. Hij komt ons bijna, hij komt ons aan het boer en zegt, maar daar is die vis niet. Dan kunnen we maar weer terug te rijden. Dat is een zwaar story. Dat is een bijna zwaar story. Die mensen krijgen honger. Die kan ons gaan in de school door een reality. Want de aasje kost er een ijsje. En we kunnen drie dagen bij de ijs blijven in de week. Maar dat werd kost, dat kan ze weer. Die mensen zeggen ons leven is ruwe vis. En weet je of dat waar is niet, maar hulle sê ze niet. Ons leven is die mensen wat die vis eet niet. Hij gooit niet daar aan. Want mijn pa heeft een paar jaar op zich gewerkt. Hij maakt die wetten gemaakt, het kende die zeewater. Voor hij geboren is, toen vang hij mensen uit snoep. En dan vang nou nog snoep. En snoep wordt hij uitgeroeid. Zo, dat hij maar met die wetten gemaakt had. Hij kent niet zien wat hij weet niet wat we praten. For many years, these men used to work the boats for a boat owner. When he left St. Helena, he gave them the boats to work for themselves. Now they say the government's new rule that every fisherman is to get only one kind of permit is destroying the life they've built for themselves. They say they can't survive only from net fishing. They need to be able to catch fish with hand lines in those times when the net fish are scarce. No more is not snook for me. Was not the hotels for me. Was the bee license is afgetrek. Ik was aangelukkig. Ik was van de eerste wat mijn net verspil met gekregen. Maar was kijk nog altijd voor en toe voor onze bee license. A short way up the coast is Faldruf. Here, net fishers have traditionally made a living from dried fish called bokums. But the famous fish houses along the river are also in trouble. Most of the fishermen here have not been given rights. The only fish available has been bought in from one of only four rights holders. This fish house used to employ 14 people. Now these two men are the only ones left with jobs. 
Of enig het my aansoek gedoen, en het is nie onsuccesvol gewees. En nou sê ons, ons kan nie die aansoek doen, en wat het wees in die feest doen. En weet, ek kan nie twee jaar van my werk sit nie. Ek kan nie, en die, en die geld nodig. Wat, wat moet gebeur in tussen tyd? Dit is ons die werkscheping nie. Dit is ons, dit is ons die mense, sy brood en boter weg wat van die tafel af. Daar van die mense lewe. In the fish house next door, there are even less fish. Desperation hangs in the air. After 50 years in the business, the owner says he doesn't know how much longer he can hold on. His biggest gripe? Those who did get rights are people with other income. So as if the for the right of the government to have the permit, then would the permit have been enough. So there would have been enough permit for the for the abhangliges that the owner had. But now the permit for the government to have the permit. So yeah, so that now the owner can come from the from the business. En uh, toe het ek maar die vis is gehuur om aan te gaan, om, om die ander wat aan te vul. Nou sit ek in die dilemma. Ek kan die vis kreeg in. Ek maak sê die vis van. Ek het die geld nie mees nie, ek moet die mense betaal. Ek kan die inkomst in die, in die, in die, in die bezigheid in nie. Ek sit, ek kan niks maak nie. Ek is heel te mal moedeloos al. Ek is, ek is al raad op al. During the summer holiday season, tourists flock to the west coast. The fish drying houses along the river in Faldruf are a main attraction. But this year the prospects are bleak. In the week we were there, one owner had already advised four tour groups not to come. Part of Norster finds itself in the same situation. They also expect the tourists to disappear along with the fish. It has long traded on its quaint fishing village image. On the beach stands a monument to the status a brand new fish market. Ironically, it was built by government with a poverty alleviation fund. But this market has no fish, and the fishermen have no jobs. Even the fish and chips shop has to buy frozen fish from the big factories elsewhere. Ons kan nie gaan ons vis vangen, jy kan nie wagen om die sien te gaan. Die ding staan daar. Ons, ons kan nie om van vis wil sien nie. Die, die toerisme kom en gaan. Mense kom van heinde en ver, kom vis ook, daar is die vis he. Back in the city, things aren't any simpler. This is Hart Bay in Cape Town. Another part of the world famous for its fishing and its picturesque harbour. But in Mzami Yetu Township, the fishermen tell a dark tale of greed and exploitation. After 1994, the new government encouraged black participation in the fishing industry. They made it clear that companies with black representation would be favoured when it came to quotas. And so the fishermen say their identities were used by companies to get fishing rights that have brought them nothing. Every fisherman in this group can show at least one share certificate and at least one fishing company. Yet there's been only the odd payment. Because <laughs>
sifuma na malunge lo wetu ikota zetu asnike tena sa uztengo lipo uti sa kwa zi usipasi kwa kapo nesu kipara chenga mba ndengu trafa unwe inga kapi koyo ikota ifuma niki kuku imali ayizikuti nyaka wesipozo lungu nyaka wesipozo lungu asika ifuma niti uti haindi ufunela nina kashibu ufunela yena uti ni ufunela tina koto aikezi kuti ise kuye unyaka wa sposo lo ipaku ye ye trati makasi niki malisi itengeli pouti sikuwa zubu loo banati iyo na kefi ikala ya pao kulimende lo kulimende ma kuli ma leye tifriz le ye trati chizo kwa zubu tenge zindo sisi funa sikuwa zubu begali wali sikuwa zubu kipa rabu njomba la tete bezeche Ndobeko Kutuka is confused, angry and unemployed. He, like all the other fishermen in the township, says he's been misled by community leaders. He can't understand how a few got so rich from fishing. Yet those who've worked the sea all their lives have nothing. And like everyone else here, he wants to know what his ID number was used for. Muniba Isaacs understands this confusion better than anyone. She's a researcher at the University of the Western Cape and is writing her doctorate on transformation in the fishing industry. So what happened was that the, the fishermen put their trust within the local leaders and throughout the process, dated back from 1992, more and more people saw that this is an opportunity for money to, for self-enrichment process and they saw it for, for, for them to enrich themselves personally than to share it to, to, to the fishermen. If you say to us that there are people in Hout Bay that have been exploited, it is incumbent upon them to come to us and inform us about it. We will do the necessary investigation and we will put a team onto an investigation like that. Fishermen have been misled through the process from 1994 up to now to form into, into cooperatives, to form into community organizations, to form into companies. And, and one way or another you would find, I would find fishermen that I've interviewed that they would belong to five different organizations. So fishermen would knowingly or unknowingly have, have, have formed part of organizations and, and, and most probably within coastal management have access to this information that they are part of the one way or another part of the, of, 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 of the system. On various occasions we do get uh, informed about either misappropriation of um, of company business and shares and stuff like that and also where people have been exploited and where untruthful matters have been put on somebody's uh, application form we have then a verification unit that goes out to verify the accusations. If we discover that there was any kind of wrongdoing, those rights have been taken out. And right now we're in the process of that sort of scrutiny and we have received tip-offs from members of the public, from people in the fishing villages who know uh, who are the real fishermen as such and we're using that to weed out uh, uh, those that shouldn't have got rights in the first place. The men from Heart Bay have tried for years to find answers. Perhaps now marine and postal management will help them get clarity. In the meantime, there's good news for others who feel left out of the process. I will be sending the officials of the department to find those people who have been left destitute and we will grant fishing rights to those individuals directly. They will not need to go through a company. So for the first time, ordinary fishermen will be empowered directly. He or she will hold the right to fish, uh, not the company which he was working for. I think that we would be able to satisfy all of those traditional fishermen and women who rely on the ocean for their livelihood. If the minister pulls this off, he might still make allies of the traditional fishing communities, instead of enemies. And allies are what's needed to save our oceans from those who live off its fruits. Desperate people will do desperate things. Hungry people will take from the sea even that which the government says doesn't belong to them. Water? 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 Water?
In the meantime, when John and Marie and his family end each day hoping for news of a reprieve, a miracle that might allow him and his four fishermen sons back on the sea, it's a hope shared by many others who harvest the ocean for a living. Last <laughs> the